Greetings everyone and welcome back to the bench. It's getting messy again, just the way I like it. Just like old times. Well, apologies, I meant to put a video up last week, but something very good happened to me. And that is that I sold my old house. Yes, finally. A big weight has been lifted from my shoulders. No longer do I have to work on the place, babysit the place. It's like 20 minutes away. So a couple times a week I went up to it, checked it out. You know, having all the showings and stuff to make sure it's clean. Don't have to pay double utilities anymore. Oh, what a weight lifted off my shoulders. It's kind of bittersweet, though, because, you know, I lived in the place about half my life, 27 years, and had a lot of memories there. And it's kind of strange to think that I'll never set foot in that place again. Just not likely. And, you know, time goes one direction. I got new things to do. But mostly, I'm... So happy to have that weight lifted from my shoulders. Onward and upward, as they say. So, what am I going to do in 2024? This is my first video of the year. It's already almost halfway through January. Yep. Um, yeah, I'm going to work on the this JAT 501 here in this video. We're going to talk about hot rodding it. And over here we have the 801. I need to... Uh, finish this project up you know it's the uh, pretty much I wouldn't say same but similar to the 501 but it has a paralleled output stage designed for more power uh, of course I got the speaker project I have uh, I won't give them away yet make them a surprise I have a few other ideas for videos I want to get into this year. So we'll see how it goes. One thing I want to do with this amp, not in this video, but I would like to redesign the board and have the transistors underneath the board so when you attach it to a heat sink you just run a screw right through it and it makes it so much easier to mount. The, the board will be a little bigger, but the overall footprint will be smaller because you don't have these transistors sticking out the side. And it'll be another option. We have the uh, inline board as well. This is the Intel inside because we put it on a uh, an old uh, Pentium heat sink. I forget what they call it. Pentium 4 or something like that. The old heat sink there with a fan. Yeah, we have the inline option. And I'll put a link if you want to download the files that have a board made. There's a bill of materials and kind of a little document I made about the amp. So that'll be available. It's not going to have the, the hot rodded changes, though. This is just kind of an offshoot if you wanted to squeak a little more power out of the amplifier. Well, later in the video, we'll get into power measurements, but let's take a look at the schematic here. Now, there's a revision that doesn't have anything to do with the hot rodding, but it's a general revision I made to the amp. It's just one component. If you already built the amp, you don't have to do this. It, I don't think it really makes an audible difference. It's more of a spec sheet type performance difference, so yeah. Six of one, half a dozen of the other, I guess you could say. But I'm changing the value of this capacitor. It's 100 picofarad. I'm going to drop it to 68. This is a, an important component in that it controls the frequency response of the amplifier at the very high end. You know, the frequency response runs out to several hundred kilohertz. And the reason you do that is to give negative feedback some headroom at the higher audio frequencies. It needs that open loop headroom in order for it to do its business and increase linearity of the circuit. Does it really make a difference? Well, this amplifier, when I measured it, it was pretty good at high frequencies already. It's, yeah, I don't think it makes an audible difference. It's just a uh, spec sheet type performance. 
So what lowering the value, I'm trading some stability margin for performance. However, I was pretty conservative at 100 picofarads, and I still have plenty of margins there to work with. I did test the circuit. It's plenty stable, so I wouldn't worry about it. If you want to squeak a little more performance, especially at the higher audio frequencies, then you could drop that value down. You can even go lower if you want to you know, push it a little bit. It'll be interesting to see how this affects the distortion performance when I get some equipment in here to measure distortion at the levels this amp produces. So that's all I'll say about that. So hot rotting the amplifier. The things I marked in green here is what we have to pay attention to. Normally the amp is measured at a supply voltage of plus and minus 35. So with 8 ohm loads you can expect somewhere around 60 watts. 4 ohm loads it'd be somewhere around 100 watts. I think we got a little bit more when I tested it. But if you're using 8 ohm speakers and you want a little more headroom, increasing the power can be desirable. So if we bump the voltage up you might be able to get into the 75 to 85 watt range we'll see what it actually measures at i wouldn't use the amp with four ohm loads at a higher supply voltage because you'd be stressing the output transistors if you need power beyond that you're going to have to go with a different amp and that's why i'm designing the 801 so if you're needing power with eight ohm loads say around 125 watts or more, or close to 200 watts into 4 ohm loads, the 801 might be something to consider. As the amp stands, it can run up to 42 volts, but the problem is with unregulated supplies, that would be an idle voltage because once you load it down, the supply voltage is going to drop. To get the best load regulation from an unregulated supply, I would use a toroidal type transformer as they have good load regulation. Choose a transformer that's rated at least double the output power of the amplifier. So if it's a 100 watt amp, choose a 200 volt amp transformer. So if it's stereo, you know, two channels, you'd have to go with a 400 volt transformer. And that would help with your load regulation somewhat. Now to run this amp at elevated voltages, of course the standing idle voltage is going to be closer to 50 volts, let's say around 48. So we have to look at these components here. I don't know why I circled this capacitor. It's rated 100 volts, but you have to look at the electrolytic cap because it's rated 50 volts. And if you're approaching that, you might want to bump it up to the next common value, which is 63 volts, I believe. Of course, on the negative... I got interrupted by the furnace there. I fixed that problem in the old house, and now I have it again in this house. But that's something that's going to get taken care of anyway. Yeah, we got to take care of the negative rail cap as well. Next is a voltage amplification stage. We have the Class A amplification transistor, and this transistor is part of a constant current source. So at a standing idle voltage of plus minus 42 volts, these dissipate between a quarter and a third of a watt, and that's fine. But if you bump the voltage up, it'll, they'll be dissipating a little over a third of a watt. You might say, that's not much, but they are TO220s, and you really don't want them to be over 60 degrees Celsius for any length of time. So I would recommend putting a heat sink, a little heat sink. You know, it's made of very light aluminum. Just fold it right around the transistor. It doesn't have to be very big. We're just helping them dissipate a little bit. Oh, there's the furnace again. But yeah, at higher voltages, I'd recommend uh, heat sinks for those transistors. The next thing to be concerned with are the driver transistors. I'm using BD139 and BD140 in the original circuit. And you're probably okay up to around plus minus 42 volts. They are 80 volt transistors. You might be saying, well, at idle they're just sitting with only about 40 volts or so across them. There's some other voltage drops in the circuit, of course, but 
Well, you have to remember, under a large signal condition, there can be close to rail-to-rail -rail voltage across the transistor. So you can have, uh, you know, close to 96 volts, probably more like 90, but, you know, that's still over the rated breakdown voltage. Now, here's the thing with transistors, though. They often measure the collector emitter breakdown voltage with the base open, and in many cases, the breakdown voltage is higher when the base is connected to a circuit, and that depends on the currents and voltages, of course. But that can be true up to the point where you reach second breakdown. You, know, you still have to operate the transistor in a safe operating area. If you're more adventurous than I, you could just see how those transistors perform, and likely you'll get away with it. But are we still safe with the collector to base voltage? I have to think about that. See, if, if the output swings towards one rail, and say it swings to the positive rail, this side would be close to that rail. So yeah, the collector to base breakdown voltage would be of concern as well. So yeah, you have to consider a lot of things. Uh, what transistors would I recommend? I'd recommend these guys here. MJE 15028-15029. I think these are higher voltage ones, but these are plenty high enough. These weren't available the last time I was looking for them, but these are 120 volt. So yeah, that's plenty. Much higher current. The only problem is these are, I believe these are TO29 K-style, and the other ones, of course, are TO220. And between those, they reverse the base and emitter pins. They flip-flop them, so they, they won't fit on the board. You'd have to reverse mount them. But you can do that using a, a little heat sink, a little metal tab. Just remember to isolate the transistor's case from the heat sink. Last but not least is the size of the heat sink. You're calling on the amp to deliver more power, so you have to make sure you have an adequately sized heat sink. So yeah, you don't really have to change much, if anything, depending on how, how high you go. I'd, if I were adventurous, I would not change anything up to a voltage of plus or minus 45, you know, at standing idle. But yeah, I think you're pushing it if you're going any higher than that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is take one of these amplifiers and run it at a higher supply voltage. The only problem is I don't have a regulated supply, so when I measure power, I'll have to monitor the supply voltage to see what it is so we can correlate the power with the supply voltage. Well, I have this old power transformer. It's meant for 100 watt amps. And they got filter capacitors buried under here. Full wave bridge. So I'll hook it up, get a voltage set up, and uh, take some measurements. Okay, got this thing powered up. I just let it set for 45 minutes. Across the rails is 93 volts. So what's that? 40, 40 six and a half volts on each side. I wanted to see what's getting hot. So I got this Emphy Ray thing. This is pretty nice. It was sent to me to review. I did a review a while back. It's got the nice higher resolution thermal sensor. It feels nice and solid. But as with any Chinese product, they always have one major flaw, which makes it annoying, is when it's turned off, it will draw the battery down. I mean, sitting for like three weeks, it's kind of annoying, but I'll do the easy way out here and just point the camera at the screen. 170 degrees Fahrenheit. That one's 162 or something. Yeah, those 
are in the voltage amplification stage, just like I mentioned, they're getting a little too hot for me. I would put heat sinks on those little transistors there like I was talking about before. Okay, it's running at 93 volts across the rails. That's what, 46 and a half. Under load, it's 8 ohms. Oh, yep, those are warm. Getting warm quick. And let me put some waveforms on the screen or the scope won't give me an accurate reading. And what do we got there? Focus, please. 29... 29.9, we'll say. So 29.9 squared divided by 8 ohm load. 100 and just about 112 watts. But that's under load. Your supply would probably sag quite a bit. So let me get a more realistic measurement here. Now we're running it at plus minus 40 volts now under load. Let's see what we're getting now. Uh, 30, I don't know, 25.74. Piece of shit. Okay, so now we're getting around 83 watts. That's not bad. So what's our load regulation of this power supply, this transformer I'm using? So if I turn the signal off, it jumps up to yeah, about plus minus 44 volts. Now the meter decided it was done so there you go hot rodding the jat 501 so what would i recommend you know i would probably just keep the amp as is if you can keep the idle voltage at or under plus minus 45 i mean you still want to heat sink these amplification stage transistors and you know, give you around 80 some watts and if you're going for 100 watts, you're going to have to run the thing at a little bit higher voltage. In that case, I would change the driver transistors to the uh, more robust ones. So how this performs is up to how this performs the power supply as far as you know the output power. So yeah, we're getting a decent continuous output power there running at a little higher voltage so i'll wrap it up here thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one